Hi, welcome to All Brands After Hours with me, Courtney Dowlett, the show where we usually hang out and craft together. However, today we're doing a little something different. We're going to be doing 10 things that I wish someone would have told me when I started with my So I've got this giant thing of vinyl right here. It's got a ton of different vinyl. And the number one thing I like to tell beginners, you're starting with this, you're starting from scratch, you're a newbie. I saw someone in the comments use that word and I was like, yes, I love it. I love the newbies. Let me help. So with this, it's great vinyl, wonderful vinyl, really, really great. However, this is pretty old vinyl. Will I still use it? Absolutely, because I'm frugal. But I know to treat it a little differently because it's old. I have newer vinyl. I always have people that love to show me their vinyl collection. Sorry, Courtney, I got this for a great deal. It was a great price. It was, and, and in my head I'm thinking it was probably expired or expiring. There's not a set date for vinyl to expire, but over time it does get a little funky. I mean, it's got sticky, like this is pressure sensitive vinyl. So it's like a sticker. Stickers get old. Uh, heat transfer vinyl doesn't even work because that glue on the back there will get old. If you have ever cut through material and you notice that, hey, my blade's good, my mat's good, what's happening? It's probably because the vinyl is expired. Um, you don't know how long it's been sitting on that shelf or if it was in a temperature controlled warehouse like allbrands.com's warehouse. <laughs> you don't know. So if, if it is that issue, don't get frustrated. Don't think that you're messing up. It might be the vinyl. It happens every once in a while. It takes a few, few years for that to happen. Happen, so it's not often, but it is something to be aware of. I didn't know that and I got some really old vinyl one time from uh, Amazon and <laughs> I, I was really frustrated and I was blaming myself thinking that I had done something wrong and that I was messing up. Sorry, I just saw a little fluff flying in the air. Um, that I had done something wrong. When it wasn't me, it was the vinyl. So if your blade's good and your mat's good, it might be your vinyl. Another question I get a lot, which it is not a dumb question, and I feel like people are always hesitant to ask me, Corey, do I have to buy Brother branded things to use in my scanning cut? According to Brother, maybe yes, but according to me, no, you don't. You don't have to use Brother branded things. You don't have to use only Brother vinyl. You don't have to use only Brother um, scrapers or brayers or anything like that. You can use other brands. The machine doesn't know. <laughs> the machine knows, do you want me to cut through all of this or do you want me to cut through some of this? So the machine has no idea what vinyl it is. I personally have my favorites, which are Caesar, so S-I-S-E-R, and Oracle 651 are usually my go-tos for personal use. Um, but you can use Cricut vinyl, you can use Brother vinyl, you can use any vinyl under the sun. The machine doesn't know. Dollar Tree has a vinyl. It's not great quality, but you could use it. You could make it work. So it doesn't have to be a Brother branded product to go into the Scan and Cut. So if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette and you're wanting to get a Scan and Cut, a lot of your stuff you can use on there, except the mats and the blades. Those can't go in there because those are you know, tailored to each machine. But all of your vinyl, cardstock, anything like that can go in the machine. It does not have to be just that particular brand. And that goes usually with Silhouette and Cricuts too. Another thing I wish I could tell past Courtney when she first started out in this years ago is to start not small. Do not start small. Small is small and delicate and can be quite frustrating. So choose an image like this little guy right here. He's, he's small, but he is not itty bitty. So he had easy things for me to weed out. Let me see if I can go a little bit closer. He had easy things that I could weed out and it was super easy to do. So this, this was a great beginner project for me to do. Something that was itty bitty or things like this, <laughs> like our board here that had all the little, little letters and all the little bits. That's not a great first project. Now you can do it within the first few bits. I mean, once you kind of done it a bit. So these are both pressure sensitive vinyl. However, this is a little bit more tedious and I don't want you to get discouraged. So start a little bit bigger, start a little bit simpler for the first few projects so that way you've completed a project that gives you a little confidence. So once you've done that and you feel confident and good in that, then move on and do different things. So don't get discouraged, start with some easier projects. I know it's fun and you really wanna jump into it and you're excited, 
but you don't want to get burned out because things aren't going quite right. But that's just because you haven't done it to do or you haven't done it a ton. So don't get discouraged. You've got this. Let's start a little bit bigger. Don't do a small little detailed one, okay? All right, next tip. And I think I've said this quite a few times on this, the show because it was a light bulb moment when someone told me this. So with transfer tape, this is brother's transfer tape. You would use transfer tape when you're doing, um, you would use transfer tape when you're doing like a uh, pressure sensitive vinyl. That's when you would use transfer tape to get it over to the image. Do not throw it away after you've used it. It is reusable. If it's still sticky, you put it back on that sheet and you reuse it. Let's save our money where we can. I had one lady come up to me and say, wow, transfer tape and all these materials are so expensive. And I'm like, yeah, I guess they could get a little expensive. She's like, well, yeah, it's a one and done. And I said, excuse me, what? She was like, yeah, you just have to throw it away. I was like, you've been throwing transfer tape away after you've used it once. Yeah, why? Ma'am, that's a lot of money you've been throwing away. No, I'm just kidding. Ma'am, that's, no, no. We reuse transfer tape. We use it again and again, as many times as we can, until it's no longer sticky, then fine, throw it away. But it's reusable, reuse it. All right, this is a biggie. This should be number one. Do not throw out your mats. So, the easiest way to save money on mats are treating them properly. What does that mean, Courtney? That means cleaning them, that means uh, storing them properly with their protective sheets on them. If you do that, your mats will last a lot longer. If you have the correct settings on your CM model with scanning cuts, or if you have an auto blade, you're not gonna be cutting through them. And you used to be able to flip over my mats and there was duct tape on the back of them because I used to cut through them. No more with auto blade. But, treating them correctly. What I recommend doing, and this is all brands, <laughs> is going to the Dollar Tree and you're gonna go get something called Totally Awesome. It, it comes in a like yellow, it's like yellow, it's a cleaner, it's all purpose cleaner. And what you're going to do is you're going to take it, do not dilute it, do not do 50-50 ratios, do not do that. Full strength, we want full strength because if not, it's gonna mess with your glue. You're gonna take your dirty mat, you're going to spray totally awesome on it and then you're going to get a scraper of any sort you're just gonna you're not scraping it but you're just lightly you know pushing the dirt around do you like that all over your mat you're gonna take a paper towel and you're gonna wipe your mat off and what that's going to do is take all that residue all that gross stuff that made your mat not sticky off and then it's going to be not sticky and that's going to be scary but if you leave it out to dry, do not put your protective cover back on it, leave it out to dry, it's gonna bring back all that stickiness and it's going to be almost as good as new. So if you keep doing that and keeping them clean, so once it's dry, put your protective sheet back on, the clear sheet back on, and then now you've got almost a brand new mat. I say almost because, you know, it, it brings it back but over time, you're gonna lose sticky, but this is gonna make it last so much longer. It's gonna be awesome. So treat your backs well, they'll treat you well. All right, so the next one I get quite a lot is, Courtney, how often do I need to change my blade? Not very often. You do not need to change it often. The machine comes with the blades already in there. So if you unscrew this little top, your blade is in there. It's so little, it's in there. So. You don't need to change it often. It's good as it is. You do not need to change it unless you notice that it's not giving you as good as a cut that it used to, then it's time to change your blade. You have two different options. You can get a new holder and blade because they're sold separately, or you could just get a new blade. If you wanted to do that, all you would have to do is open this up right here, get this blade out, put your new blade in, and then screw it back on. And now you have a new blade which is really cool. So that's how you change out blades. You really won't have to do it very often, but if you notice that it is starting to not give a good cut over a long period of time, or if you've been doing material that are super, super tough, like a thin balsa wood, it might be time to change your blade. The next tip is, what is the difference between vinyls? Are there different vinyls? Yes, yes they are. So if you look at both of these, they look like silver glitter vinyls but they're different. This one has paper backing and is pressure sensitive vinyl. This one does not have a paper backing. It looks like this, it's matte. This one is heat transfer vinyl. So 
pressure sensitive vinyl goes on anything you do not want to add heat to. So say a wall or a cup, um, like a tumbler cup, you would want to add pressure sensitive vinyl. If it was a shirt or some kind of fabric, you would want to use heat transfer vinyl. So vinyl is both two parts. So if you have, let's say, so say you had this right here. This is my son, Alex, a little stocking for him. This is fabric. So would I use pressure sensitive or would I use heat transfer vinyl? I would use heat transfer vinyl because it is a fabric material. If it was a plastic ornament or something like that, I would use pressure sensitive vinyl. So the easiest way to tell paper backing, no paper backing. So the back part of this right here, that is glue. So you've got your shiny side and you got your matte side. So when you're cutting it, you want shiny side down because you want to cut through that, just that vinyl. You do not want to cut all the way through because that clear part on the top, the shiny part, is what's keeping it all together. So if we had Alex's name right here, we would have had to move every single letter. But if we keep it that part together, we don't have to do that. Same thing with this vinyl. We would cut with paper side down. Paper side down, cut the top part. And you'd only want to do a half cut to only go through half of those materials. So if we were doing pressure sensitive vinyl, we would have to get transfer tape to take that image from the vinyl onto whatever it is we're wanting to put it on. Not fabric, we're wanting to put it in something. Say I want to put my name right here. Then I would use pressure sensitive vinyl with transfer tape to put it on. This is what transfer tape looks like right here. So you would want this for your pressure sensitive vinyl. And then your heat vinyl, it's a standalone girl. She does not need transfer tape to use her. She is just gonna have an iron to heat her up. Remember, when you put your design on, you're gonna weed out the parts you don't want, put it on, protective cloth fabric, iron it on, peel off that clear part. Your design's gonna stay there and you're good to go. This just goes right into the next tip. Get yourself a weeding tool. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It could literally be a, uh, a needle inside of a little uh, mechanical pencil. It, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Fancy. I like these personally. It's uh, Brother Branded, and I will always link them in the description. Everything I'm talking about will be linked, but I enjoy these for weeding. So that's going to weed out. This is pressure sensitive. So remember two parts, it's like a sticker. So we're gonna weed off the part we do not want. So this is great because it's got a little bitty hook on it and I can hook it into the parts that I don't want. And that's what we did on our Santa treat board. So if I can put a clip of me weeding on that, you can kind of see this working a little bit better. All right, how cool is that? Transfer tape like this and we pull the backing off of it, keep it because it's pretty usable. And we're going to put it down on our image. So paper backing, image. And then you're going to take a scraper tool of any kind. So our next tip is while we're doing this, you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna scrape that side as well. Because what we're doing is making sure that it's being stuck on this clear part no matter what. So, we're doing it on the paper side, flip it back over to the other side. And we're gonna do it one more time on the paper side. We are good to go. So now, when we peel that off, this is our paper, our image stays on the transfer tape. So now we can take our transfer tape over to anything that we want to, say our scan and cut, which I am not putting things on my scan and cut, but if we wanted to put it on the wall or something like that, we could do that no problem. So say we had this board right here and we wanted to add a little snowflake to it for our little charcuterie board. We could then take our little image, either our scraper, scraper onto there, come off to the corner, Peel it off. Now we've just added a cute little snowflake to our charcuterie board. So something no one ever explained to me and I had to figure out the hard way is the different types of vinyl can do different things. So if you've got a pressure sensitive vinyl, a regular vinyl like this can lay on top of a glitter vinyl. It doesn't care and can do vice versa. 
However, if you have a heat vinyl, it can own, or a heat glitter vinyl, it needs to be on top or you need to cut all the way through. So say we had our glittery little star uh, snowflake right here. I could not take that and put that and layer it on top of another glitter. It might stay for a little bit, but there's glue on the back of here and that glue needs to be heated up to properly bond and it will not heat up properly to another glitter vinyl. So if you had uh, a different kind that was heat transfer that was not glitter, it could heat up to that just fine. But there's something about glitter, it doesn't want to heat up properly. It might stay for a little bit, but it's not gonna stay long. And if you're selling these items, you'll want them to stay long. So what you can do to get around that is whenever you're cutting out your image, weed out the part that is not going to be underneath that. That way it's touching, like say my shirt, it's touching. But if I wanted inside those snowflakes to be a different uh, glitter color, well when I'm weeding, I would just weed and make sure those are available. So that way I'm not layering any glitter on uh, vinyl on top of another glitter vinyl. You can do it on any other kind of vinyl. Well, you could do it on regular uh, heat transfer vinyl, but not the glitter. So. That's something no one ever told me, I'll tell you. All right, and our bonus one is to use Brother Canvas. Brother Canvas is the free software that Brother gives you with your machine. You do not have to pay a subscription for it. It is completely free. Why do I recommend Brother Canvas? Because it is this screen, but bigger. And it's also a lot easier to use in my opinion because they're welding tools and all the different tools. So I always recommend to dive into Brother Canvas, play around, it's a lot of fun. They give you free projects on there. They never delete them out, which is totally awesome. And they're really, really great. So go on Brother Canvas, play around, click around, register your machine, because you should be doing that either way, and have some fun. It's free, it comes with a machine. Why not? All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video of 10 things that I wish someone would have told me when I started with my scanning cut as a beginner. If you have any tips or tricks that you wish someone would have told you, please put them in the comments down below to help another beginner. We're here as a community to help each other, so thank you for that. And thank you guys for joining me today. Make sure you show up next week. We'll be doing some fun projects. Y'all have a good night. Bye.